Marble opponent. This is for all the marbles. Here we go. The following contest is scheduled for one fall and is for the Intercontinental Championship. This kid's the real deal. Hey, Byron, here's a little trivia question for you. Who's the only person with the NXT SmackDown and Raw Tag Team titles? Oh, I know. Jason Jordan. For the first time in your life, Saxton, you're right. He read it off my notes. Fair point. Jason Jordan joined Raw in 2017 as general manager Kurt Angle's son. What a wonderful moment you that was. the news. Get ready, WWE Universe, it's Buzz! Is it me, or is this guy's 15 minutes of fame expired? I think it's just you, because just like a good mattress, Buzz's success seemingly has no expiration date. Is that why our chairs have bed bugs, Saxton? Introducing the challenger from Chicago, Illinois, weighing in at 245 pounds, Jason Jordan. Introducing the champion from New York, weighing in at 241 pounds, he is the Intercontinental Champion, Buzzsaw. This is all the makings of a legendary night. think of Buzz's decision to keep the Intercontinental title Jeez. rather than his custom title. I mean, it was a no-brainer. Do you want a prestigious title that guys like Bret Hart and Shawn Michaels once held? Or do you want a self-awarded, made-up title that has no history? I wish he could have kept both titles, but I respect Kurt Angle's decision. At least Buzz will always have his title as a keepsake. Nonetheless, that decision won't matter at all if Buzz slips up tonight and Jason Jordan walks away with the championship. Uh -oh. 
He might have it. He's definitely starting to lose it here. And he escapes the submission. And good thing, that could have been disastrous. We've seen champions head into matches maybe a little too confident, only to be picked off in the end. And guys, I can't help but wonder if we're going to see that again here tonight. Tag made here. Uh-oh, this is... Oh, what a slam! Uh -oh. At the oh, oh, my goodness, crushing it! Speaking of champions heading into matches a bit overconfident, one of the most glaring examples of that would have to be the honky-tonk man's attitude heading into his Intercontinental Championship defense at SummerSlam 1988. We all know what happened to him on that night. <laughs> you are so right, Michael. That was great, of course, though. It wasn't so great for the Honky Tonk Man, who ended up losing his championship to the Ultimate Warrior in fewer than 30 seconds. Call me crazy, but this might be one of those rare instances where the champion actually enters the match as the underdog. I know it sounds odd, but it really seems like the champ is up against a headwind here. What are you thinking about some oh, impactful slam? You're not crazy, Byron. The champ certainly has an uphill battle here. And while it's rare, we have seen the challenger head into the match as the heavy favorite. Bruno San Martino challenging Stan Stasiak in 1973 immediately comes to mind, as does Diesel squaring off against Bob Backlund in 1994. Wait, did you really just say that Saxton is not crazy, Cole? Man, just when I started to think you might be all right, you go and say something ridiculous like that. When this guy's on, look out. A lot of people are saying the champion has never looked better, but that doesn't mean we can't see an upset here tonight. Power bomb. Really working over the body. Ooh, what impact. As Byron was talking earlier about the champ being a heavy favor here tonight, I couldn't help but think back to the night Santino Morella defeated Umaga for the Intercontinental Championship in 2007. I don't think there was a person alive who thought Santino had even a sliver of hope. Hey, including Santino himself. But hey, as the old saying goes, anything can happen in the WWE.